Have you ever wondered how many entrepreneurs there are worldwide? A million? 20 million? A hundred million? Well, including a bunch of the jobs that employees are currently working on, maybe even you, these are provided by a whopping 582 million entrepreneurs. And fun fact, roughly 30% of them only have a high school degree. Why is that so many entrepreneurs though? Well, obviously because entrepreneurship is the coolest thing on earth. But is it really? The key question is, has entrepreneurship become a broken and shallow wannabe dream or is it an actual dream to come true, even for you? Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is really about capturing opportunities. It's really about making things happen. Let's face it. It's a tempting thought. The idea of being young and more successful than 95% of the people in your peer group. And to be clear, there's nothing wrong with getting drawn into that because wealth and success correlate strongly with age. Higher age generally means more wealth because you've had more time to accumulate that success. No surprise. Until age 25, you can be lucky and feel comparably wealthy if your net worth isn't net negative, because in most cases at that age it sadly is. If you're under 35 and your net worth is anything above roughly $14,000, you already belong to the upper 50% of your age. However, if you were between 55 and 64, you would already have to surpass $212,000 of net worth to count to the upper 50% in terms of wealth. At this point, being 50 or 60 years of age, you probably have money, but the precious thing you don't have anymore is youth, and it will never come back. And in many ways, entrepreneurship is nowadays seen as a gateway to bridge both youth and money. You would have something incredibly valuable, money and time. That's a major part of the popularity of the entrepreneurship equation. Additionally, you have influence, power and admiration. There's one more thing speeding up the spiral. Since we're constantly being bombarded with other people's wealth, success, beauty, materialism on social media, through short form dopamine triggering content, we were starting to feel not good enough, not successful enough, not worthy. That has led us to stop following what we may truly want and be good at and blindly choosing the cool entrepreneurship over anything. 9 to 5 jobs aren't even considered anymore because they don't make you rich and successful. Almost ironic, the fact that you can make a dream living with a 9 to 5 having less responsibility for anyone besides yourself, weekends belong to you and your thoughts, no debt while being young and making six figures, all while having magical moments with friends and family, who you would otherwise not be able to see that much anymore until they die. All that is not cool enough, as opposed to living the entrepreneurial dream. In many ways, a broken dream? Entrepreneurship has become a lifestyle product, a way of life, inspired by mega entrepreneurs like visionary Steve Jobs. Some good news between the lines, if you're on to becoming an entrepreneur, failure rates keep declining. Small business failure has declined as much as 30% since the late 70s. And yet, in today's era, we seem to have something else in common. We subscribe to the glory that comes with being an entrepreneur. Let's be honest, it's freaking cool. Fueled by the image of the formerly young generation of entrepreneurs like Evan Spiegel reached billionaire status in his mid-twenties, Steve Jobs surpassed the $100 million mark by age 25, and just in 2021, Whitney Wolf Hurt became a billionaire after the Bumble IPO. But back to you. Your attention span is short. Your wishful thinking is omnipresent. You want success and you want it now. And while it is possible to speed up the process, you cannot skip it. Mr. Beast, the multi-million dollar YouTube legend and philanthropist employing hundreds of people across his countless ventures, is only 24 years old and yet he's been in the process since age 12. Regardless of his age, that's 12 years he spent on improving his game, showed up every day providing value. From the outside, nothing fancy about that other than a cool story to tell. From the inside, he loved the process and 100% owns his success. Let's remove some of the pressure off you with the following numbers. Depending on the study and its setting, the average age for startup founders is anywhere from as young as 35 in 2021 to a range of 42 to 45. So think twice before your next Google search of is 23 too old to start a business. However, if the question is, should you be as productive and ambitious as possible at that age, then the answer is yes. 
because you have the energy to afford that and energy is your currency at this point. But back to business and its misconceptions, you gotta understand just raising capital and investment rounds for the sake of artificially upping the company evaluation on paper is not entrepreneurship. Let's face it, calling yourself an entrepreneur or CEO on your Insta bio doesn't get you any closer to Jeff Bezos. People essentially forget about the core structure behind entrepreneurship, and that's a business. People gathering together for the sake of providing value by offering a product or service for a profit, unless you're a non-profit or bankrupt. Still confident that you can do it? So are more than half of the Americans, who think they can successfully start their own company. But what is the reality of becoming and being an entrepreneur? Before we get into the daily environment of the entrepreneur, let's look at some more numbers to provide you a little reality check. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, almost 20% of small businesses fail in their first year. By the end of the second year, that number goes up to 30% and almost half of the small businesses fail in the first five years. And only one quarter, one out of four, make it to 15 years or more. From magnates like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, you can absolutely get inspired. But know that this is not normal. They are statistical outliers. Think of it like this. Everything is possible, but the odds are against you. Still in and pumped? Because there's a more serious conversation about mental health. It's not a secret that many entrepreneurs suffer from mental health issues. Anything from depression to ADHD, bipolar disorders, anxiety. Of course, business isn't necessarily the direct cause of that, but there's at least a correlation for 72% of the entrepreneurs having mental health problems. So either getting into business will lead you down one of those paths, or you've been struggling with mental health issues before, in which case you have to actively take care of your soul and well-being on top of your big business. This is possible, but be aware that this is an intense path, and for some people, it's a dead-end road. So what's a more accurate picture of the successful entrepreneur then? You're probably working long hours, not because it's trendy, but because it's necessary to keep the business alive and growing. And those hours you won't only spend on the fun parts. You will be doing accounting, you have to take care of legal and contracting, setting up any infrastructure to even work and work safely. And more importantly, you're not the center of attention and glory as much as you may think. In fact, it's you having all responsibility for your employees, conflicts between them, to be solved so your operations don't get stuck talking about stuck you have to deal with performance lags individual requests because they may not feel challenged enough and it's your sole responsibility to take care of all these issues every single day meanwhile you have to keep operations running touch base with your key clients implement processes to scale the business and make sure to adjust to fast changing macro trends so you then get crushed by your competition You're starting your days with a bunch of back-to-back -back meetings that you will provide the guidance for, ideally not wasting people's time. Throughout the day, you touch base with your management and take care of more key clients. Drive operational processes on a high level, look into your products and client feedback, and when your employees sign off to enjoy the evening, you're probably having business dinner with more clients and partners. The weekend may not always be spent on working 24-7, and yet there's almost no getting away from your brain being stuck at work. Because it's your business and you're responsible for everything. It's hard to stop thinking about that in the beginning. It's barely possible. As mentioned, it's an intense ride. And once you've reached first success, let's say you have 10 employees, when you go out of business, 10 people lose their job. So you could argue that entrepreneurship really is not about you. It's about your responsibility to the machine that you're building for the people in it and the stakeholders affected by it. If you manage to watch this video all the way till here, you have now a less delusional picture of how cool entrepreneurship really is. Because it is. You provide jobs. You enable people to live their dreams, including your dreams. You connect great and capable people who will become part of your journey. You create wealth, you support the economy, and you can build a legacy bigger than yourself. Entrepreneurship can be the wildest dream. But you want to pair dreams with a pragmatic, non-delusional approach. If entrepreneurship is your dream, don't allow misconceptions to break it and enjoy the ride along the way. Everything else is a nice byproduct.